people who are watching online. Muy bien. Buenos días. Feliz lunes. Feliz lunes a todos. Uh, feliz lunes. Happy Monday. Uh, bien. We're going to start with our little books, whichever one you've got, or some of you have both. <laughs> Los dos ambiciosos. Ustedes, and the ambitious ones of you who, who say, I want to take both. Uh, I'm going to start with that today, kind of mix up the order of work a little bit, uh, make sure I don't do short shrift to any questions people have. Uh, the really nice thing about, oh, aquí viene Nora. Here comes Nora. I'm going to let her in before I start up here properly. Um, general plan today is to discuss any questions you have from either book, uh, uh, <clears throat> perdón, and then to do a lot more practice again with these stem changing verbs. For some of you, this whole thing of stem changing verbs is not brand new. For others of you, it is brand new, but it is always something that is worth revisiting because, um, you know, sometimes we forget what they are, we forget to listen for them or look for them in reading. As you go through here, through your little books, you will notice from time to time some stem changing verbs, or you should notice, kind of be on the lookout uh, to see which verbs are used. If nothing else, you'll see uh, querer and tener. And um, so we're going to spend a lot of our time in practice with those stem changers. So I'm going to show you the things that we need first. We're going to need these, uh, your books so that you can reference any practice you have. And then I'm going to put this on share screen, whether you do this as, uh, ooh, and pardon, I got to take my share screen off a little bit because I'm getting Marianne in. Okay, that was the last person I was waiting for. Um, the other thing I want you to have handy will be uh, this page here, which I sent over to you. It's got a little bit of translation, not a lot, but again, this was all the, the prep I wanted you guys to have for stem changing verbs. So if you have that printed out separately or you have notes somewhere separately or lo que sea, wherever it may be, uh, you may want to take a minute to get that handy. Some of you uh, pull up the new screen. Some people pull up two screens. Some people like to have it printed. A mí no me importa. It does not matter to me which method you use. Okay. Vamos a empezar. Vamos a empezar con preguntas de los libros, de las novelas. We're going to start with any questions you might have from the books, whether you've got that, uh, you know, uh, just penciled in uh, or highlighted or written down in notes, lo que sea, whatever it may be. Uh, any questions you got on structures, vocabulary? Even just context of why something is is what it is. Hay preguntas. No hay preguntas. No, no questions. Sí. Oh, sí. Um, Jeffrey. La, la palabra castaño. Is that, ah. used, is that more used when you're talking about a person's coloring or is it, you know, as opposed to maroon, brown, and moreno? Ah, Mareño or something like that. Sí, sí, sí. Entiendo. Entiendo muy bien. So, uh, a good, and I will put this in chat box so that people know what he is talking about. Uh, castaño means brown. Castaño is the word that castanet comes from. Who knew? Uh, it comes from the word for chestnut. Yeah. Uh, castaño means brown. Uh, it would be kind of a golden brownish color, okay, on the gal evaluation of colors. Uh, castaño is used generally for hair color. Hair color. Um, and um, not so much for eye color, but hair color for that brunette thing. Yeah. That's the short answer. There are many words for brown in Spanish. Some of them are determined by the shading of brown. Some of them are determined by region. So if you go down to Mexico, 
Uh, they do not like to use marron down there so much. But if you go to Colombia, they do like to use marron. Um, in Spain, they use marron all the time. In, Me in Mexico, se usa generalmente café. They prefer to use that word café uh, or color de café to talk about brown. La castaño is used for hair color brunette. Uh, bien. Más preguntas, more questions that you might have about any vocabulary or structures. And it can be about like a whole sentence structure or, a, or phrases if you don't understand why words are in the order they're in, that kind of thing. Nada más. Okay. These are designed to be pretty, pretty easy to use. Um, the, the glossaries in the back usually help you with a lot of the structures. Okay. Bueno, nada más, nothing else there. ¿Verdad? Bien. Okay. Uh, I'm, just one, I, I think I saw one, one here that I wanted to ask about. Um, the uh, pobre Ana mm -hmm. chapter number four is uh, Ana está sorprendida. Ah, Ana está sorprendida. She is surprised. Está so, sorprendida. Uh, this is what kind of I mean, like sorprendida itself. Is it like present? What is categorized as the word sorprendida? Yeah. Sorprendida means surprised. Um, I will actually, es buena pregunta. This is a good pregunta, Juanita, because, oh, perdón. Uh, I will bring up a share screen to show you something. This is something when you do reading or listening, anything really, uh, that you should keep in mind. You will, on um, the question, came up about this word, which means surprise, sorprendida. You will see lots and lots of words and hear lots and lots of words used that end in ido as like a suffix, okay, or ida. Or they might be in a plural form to idos or idas. Okay, so you might hear that word sorprendida as sorprendido, uh, sorprendida, uh, sorprendidos, or the feminine form sorprendidas. And that ido ida uh, suffix, that suffix is what they call, ooh, it's called a past participle. Uh, in this case, it is being used as an adjective. So it's being just used as a descriptive word. Um, it describes, okay. Uh, words like sorprendido can be used in, uh, in verb phrases or as adjectives. Here the word sorprendida is feminine because it's talking about Ana and uh, it is being used as an adjective. So anytime you hear an ido or an ida, uh, it, you know that it actually originally comes from a verb of some sort. And in this case, it comes from sorprender. Mm -hmm. Sorprender means to surprise. Uh, so surprised, meaning a state somebody is in, is we take off that ER and we add the suffix ido or for a feminine person, ida, to change it from a verb surprise someone, like my husband surprised me with a gift, to I was surprised by something that happened, okay? And you've actually 
already seen words and heard words that use these evil kind of endings like uh, enojado. Mm -hmm. Enojado means angry, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Estoy enojada. Estoy enojada. I am angry. But enojado originally it kind of morphs from this verb, mm -hmm. enojar, which means to mm -hmm. anger to make somebody angry, you know? So um, when you he hear an ado or an ido, and I should put up here ado as well, because ido is not the only kind of suffix ending here. Uh, those kinds of endings change something from a verb into a descriptive state. Enojado is a state state of being angry. Um, you've also seen this word, ocupado, which means busy. And that comes from ocupar, to occupy, or to uh, busy oneself. You know, if you are, are taking care of an issue, if you're handling something, uh, it's ocupar, right? But ocupado is busy. And preocupado, it means worried. Um, worried, yeah, and that comes from originally a verb, preocupar, which means to worry. Okay, so let's look back real briefly at this word sorprendida. Sorprendida. Uh, Ana está sorprendida. Uh, she is surprised, uh, uh, but if we want to say something surprises her, we might shift that base word into its verb form, sorprender. Uh, so, por ejemplo, it's very common to, es muy común, it's very common to hear people saying uh, esto, this, meaning a situation, right? Any kind of situation. Esto me sorprende. This, whoops, tis, not tis, this. This, this surprises is. me, okay? And then sorprende is used as a verb. Uh, but estoy uh, sorprendido would indicate the state one is in, okay? Bien? So, so that's esto is not estoy, but oh, estoy. estoy, perdón, no, estoy. Oh. It should, I have a, <laughs> okay. a typing problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> estoy. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, that first one, that first one is esto, perdón, esto. Esto, meaning, no, it, it is esto. Esto, oh. this, 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 uh, this thing, uh, this situation. Okay. Yeah, the first one is esto. esto. Esto me sorprende. Esto me, sor me sorprende. Wow, this really surprises me. This thing that somebody did or this thing that's in front of me, you know, whatever the situation may be. Uh, esto me sorprende. But here sorprende is being used as an action. This thing is, it surprises me. It catches me unawares, right? Mm -hmm. uh, whereas when I change it into the ido format, I'm making a description. I am surprised. This is how I feel. It's a feeling I have. It's a description of my, my state of mind. So you will come uh, across, you already have come across words like preocupado, worried, ocupado, busy, enojado. Uh, so words like that. And anytime you hear an ado or an ido, it is now a descriptive word. Okay. Often, often it might be an emotion. Bien. Okay. Gracias. De nada. Buena pregunta. Hay más preguntas o no? Okay. Sí, Nora. Um, I had a question about the way they're using uh, the verb comer in a couple of sentences. Okay. So in the first one, the mother is telling Anna not to eat chocolate. So she says, no comas chocolate. 
But then in the next sentence, she says, come un platano, come fruta. So I was curious about the difference between comas and come oh. in this situation. Oh. Okay. Bueno, es buena pregunta. That is a super good question. That taps into something we have not discussed yet. Uh, let's clear this out. We're going to get something up that's brand new. You know comer to mean to eat. Okay. Uh, now, Nora, what do you think when uh, la mamá de Ana, mom, uh, Ana's mom, says come and then she mentions something. I'm just going to put up a different item. You know, come broccoli. <laughs> eat broccoli. Uh, no comas chocolates. Don't eat. Uh, is she expressing that idea of eat as, uh, wow, you're doing this right now, or as an order, do this? Well, the first sentence, it sounds like an order. Yeah, no comos chocolate. But then she is also kind of saying, eat a banana, which is almost like a suggestion. Ah, I, I am interested that you bring that up as a suggestion. Yes, it is a suggestion. Okay. Uh, bien. Both of those, come un platano and no comas chocolates, uh, both of them are actually, you might say, suggestions, but both of them in grammar terms are commands. They are commands. Um, English speaker, speakers in general kind of struggle with the idea of even what is a command. A command is a grammatical thing. It's, uh, it's a verb form, yet again, but it's not present tense. Present tense, what you've been learning about, you know, the big charts with forms for yo and tú and él a usted, nosotros, and ellos a ustedes, those big charts all represent uh, verb forms that are presente, el presente, present tense. But commands are not present tense. Commands are what they call a mood. Un modo in español, a mood. Uh, present tense is considered, is what Spanish language considers indicative, meaning something that really is happening. And indicative is a mood, like commands are a mood. In indicative, this mood means we're going to change the form into present tense, or a past, like it happened, but it's over with, or future, something will happen. All of those are considered in the world, in the realm of what they call indicative. And that means it's dealing with facts things that really are happening right now, presente, present tense. Things that really did happen in the past will be one of two different tenses, maybe even three or four, depending on the different kinds of verb tenses you use. And future, of course, is also in what they consider that realm of indicative because they consider future something that is for sure going to happen. Indicative means for sure, part of reality, something that really is going on, something that really will happen in the future, something that really did happen in the past. But commands are not a part of indicative mood and their verbs have to do something else. Commands me do not indicate an action that really is going on right now. If somebody walks through my kitchen and I say, hey, eat that up, it's a command. If I have baked something for a special dinner and I say, don't touch that because I'm saving it for dinner tonight, that's also a command. It's just a negative command. So we have affirmative, meaning go do it. Yes, do it commands. We've got negative, meaning don't do it commands. All commands indicate an activity you want to happen, you would like to suggest that it happens, but it isn't really happening yet. Commands are part of what they call imperative mood. 
and they mean that the action is not really a part of reality. It is not really going on yet. And therefore, those verbs are going to go into yet a different mode, okay? Uh, the easier way for you to think of it is just that we have affirmative com commands saying, go do it. And we have negative commands that say, don't do that. They're both commands, okay? In Spanish, sadly, when we give a command with tú, the verb will split off and do two completely different things. And they're diametrically opposed to each other, okay? Uh, happily, commands given to usted always do the same thing, whether it's a yes, do it, or a don't do it command. Commands for ustedes, meaning, hey, you guys, go do this, or hey, you guys, don't do that, do the same thing. But in tú, the verb form splits off and it does two separate things. So come un plátano is an affirmative command. Okay, and here's how you should think of it. You should think of it as an affirmative command is in its simplest sense. Well, you know, barring all the odd rule breakers, <laughs> barring irregularities. For a normal regular verb, a command is this. A tu command saying go do it, it takes away the S. That's all it does. So instead of being comes, meaning you really are eating right now, it's come, eat. And that's considered a command. You can think of it as a suggestion. It is okay to think of it as a suggestion, but that come means it isn't really happening yet. It's what somebody is telling somebody else to do. Sadly, with two commands, uh, the negative command will not look like come. It will, first of all, have to have a no. And then it's going to use, wait a minute, the vowel that looks like completely wrong for comer. The S comes back with an affirmative command. We got rid of the S. And now it's a command, come. Okay. But when, with a negative command, the S comes back. But wow, look at what happens. Instead of looking like it comes from an ER verb, it looks like it comes from an AR verb. Mm -hmm. So it becomes no comas, don't eat. And it's not talking about what she is really doing right now. It's talking about what you're ordering her or telling her not to do. Bien? Okay. Does that make some sense? Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you some, some and, and yeah, especially since you've got, uh, it's kind of hard to avoid commands. So first of all, let's think about this a little bit. A verb like nevar to snow, you can't even make a command out of that. Oh, the song, let it snow, let it snow. Okay, maybe. But, you know, some verbs won't even go into commands. Do you ever tell somebody prefer this as a command? No, you don't. Okay. But, 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 but many, many verbs do go into commands. Uh, like, somebody may tell you, hey, drink up. <laughs> yeah. So, the command for to, and it's important, commands are given to a you, right? When you give an order, you give it to somebody, say, implying the you, right? Maybe in a plural you. It, it could even be theoretically a let's. But a to command, bebes, would be the to form for beber, right? Bebes, in, in indicative, in plain old, it's really happening. It would be bebes with an S at the end, right? Bebes. So to make it a command of drink up, it's just this. Bebe. Bebe. That's it. But for the negative, don't drink. Wow. Too much. You're going to get drunk. No. Bebas. It'll switch to an ah sound. And then it'll tag the S back on for the no. No bebas. Okay. We're going to give you another example. The most common example in the world, because people say this to you when you walk in the door. 
They say, come on in. And this is the verb you use to tell somebody, come on in. All right. A, a tool form in reality, like somebody is really doing it, the tool form of pasar would be pasas, right? Pasas. But if you give it as a command saying, hey, do this. We take away the S and it's just pasa. Pasa, por favor. Come on in. So when you hear somebody saying, pasa, por favor, they're saying, please come on in as a two command, okay? But a negative two command, don't come in this way. Wow, the house is a mess. It's no pases, an E-S at the end. No, a no at the front, pases. Bien? No, pases. P-A-S-E-S? P-A-S-E-S. It looks like, wait a minute, why would you use passes with an E here? It shouldn't use an E, it's an AR verb. Well, when they use what looks like the wrong vowel, when I use an E, the letter E sound here, or an A, a letter A here with the S, that means we're changing it, we're switching it out of indicative meaning it's really happening, and into either what they call imperative or subjunctive, meaning not really happening. But like Nora said, it sounds like it's suggestion. It is a suggestion. A command is a suggestion. Somebody wants you to do something. It's like the whole thing of you tell your kids to clean the bathrooms, go clean the kitchen, go clean the bathroom, but is it happening? <laughs> it may never happen Correct. it is not happening right now <laughs> so if it really isn't happening right now but you want it to it's gonna flip out into what sounds like the wrong vowel it'll use an a e sound or an ah uh sound and that's the signal to you to oh it isn't really happening somebody wants it to happen or they're telling them to do something but we don't really know if it's going to happen Bien? all that little thing from those two little words all that yeah all that from those two little words but yeah that's important es importante because commands we don't recognize you know because we don't change stuff oh uh, walk down that street. That's a command. Get in the car. That's a command. Don't open the fridge. That's a command. Come here. That's a command. All those things are commands. You want somebody to do something, but it isn't really going on right now. Okay. Uh, Larry, tienes pregunta. And if you, if you were going to do the same thing for uh, ustedes, how would it change? Que buena pregunta. <laughs> and Larry, that's a $64,000 question. Okay. And here's why it's a $60,000 question. You can only use the two command with somebody you're on a first name basis with. So most of the time, if you're a traveler, you're going to be dealing with people in airplanes, people in hotels, people in restaurants, people in stores, Unless you see them all the time, day after day, like in a corner uh, grocery store, maybe you might use tú. But you're usually going to use usted. Usted commands, unlike the two commands you see up on the top layer there, are going to be much more consistent. Meaning two commands are very weird and hard for us to use because an affirmative command uses one vowel. But the negative command uses the opposite vowel. What the heck do they do that? I, I can't tell you why they do that, but that's just what they do. Usted commands are very, very normal. They are very normal. They're always going to use that opposite vowel. So let's look at the same thing. And, and, and ustedes as well. You know, you might be talking to a bunch of people at the, the table where you're eating, right? Or to two people who are waiting on you instead of one person waiting on you. Uh, usted and ustedes, when we talk about them using commands, the affirmative and the negative commands 
uh, whoop, commands uh, are exactly the same. So the verb do, uh, are the same. Okay, all you do is that you put a no in front of one of them to make it a negative command. So yay, affirmative and negative is easy to tell apart. One just says, go do this. The other one says, don't do this with the word no. Okay, but usted and ustedes commands will look like the negative two commands. They are going to use the opposite vowel. Oops, opposite vowel. They'll use the opposite vowel ending, but it will be consistent that uh, AR verbs will get A endings, or if it's ustedes, a -N -A -E -N, that thing about the N n, n, n sound at the end of a verb always means a bunch of people. Yeah. So AR verbs will use E or EN, and ER verbs will use A or Oh, a N or A N. So for comer, for example, uh, comer, uh, somebody given in usted command will say coma or coman. No coma, no coman. So the no doesn't change what we do with the verb. Verb stays the same. Okay. Uh, beber becomes beba or Beban. Uh, bueno, por ejemplo, uh, tomar becomes tome or tomen. Yay. Um, a ver, a ver, a ver. Uh, ooh, I, I want to use some of it, but they're very, very irregular. Uh, oh, buscar, buscar. Uh, you know, look for something. And you, you tell somebody to go look for something. Uh, busque, busque, and it gets Q-U-E because that's a spelling change or busquen. And I'll show you why that spelling change happens. B-U-S-C-E, if I did this, if I just said, oh, I'll just take buscar and I'll swap out the opposite vowel, that B-U-S-C-E would not be pronounced busque. It would be pronounced buse because C E is s -s 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 the S sound. So to get back to the k -k -k of buscar, we have to put that Q U in. It's just a spelling thing to get us to phonetically that right sound. Okay, because C E can't have a k sound from buscar. So we have to spell it as busque, busque or busquen. Bien? So um, that in a nutshell, and the easy part, when you hear an opposite vowel, it's gonna mean either a command or what they call subjunctive, which would mean subjunctive by the way that somebody is making a suggestion. That's all it's doing. Yeah. So in, the, in this case, to make a comment like that, you, you gotta know like um, how to change that, like, you know, uh, the kind of like changing the stem because E-R ending with the yeah. um, A-S. And then what about the one that ending with I-R I -R and then O-R, like, like ex escribir, for like example. Like escribir? Like, es uh, like you want to tell somebody, hey, uh, write these emails? Write, write this down, yes. Yeah, write this down. yeah. Okay. So like, that's, that changes into a, so you have write the, this uh, the down. specific... I IR verbs will use what they call the opposite vowel. So escribir becomes escriba. Escriba sounds like, wow, that's wrong. But it's not wrong if it's a command, right? Uh, so what happens is AR verbs use the endings we would normally use for ER and IR verbs. ER and IR verbs use the endings that we normally use for AR verbs. They, they switch roles. Essentially, they switch roles, they switch endings. And by switching that ending to what sounds like, well, that's wrong, it's not on the chart, uh, you're turning it into what we would call a command, an order telling somebody do something, or subjunctive, which again is kind of like a command because 
you are wanting somebody to do something or suggesting that somebody does something. So uh, I'll put this in here, ER and IR verbs and IR verbs use these endings. Bien? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now I'm gonna tell you, it, it's a little more complicated than that, but if I get into all the dynamics, I'll get too far into the weeds. There is another step, you know, technically to form a command, you start with a yo form first, you drop the o and then you add the opposite vowel. Okay. So uh, with some verbs like tener, it becomes tenga. So anytime you hear somebody saying tenga cuidado, they're saying be careful, have care. But that's a command. They're telling you to be careful. Son buenas preguntas. You guys have brought up some good questions. Okay. Hay más preguntas. All that from opposite vowels. So when you read these little things in the books, you're going to actually read a fair number of, of commands. Uh, you know, you are going to see them here and there. Uh, but they are only where people are telling somebody, go do it or don't do it. Uh, bien? Okay. Okay. Vale. ¿Hay más o no? No hay más. No more. Okay. Uh, magnífico. We are going to switch over into a different mode here. Ooh, we're going we're gonna to go to visual mode. With stem changing, we're going to switch over into the world of stem changing verbs. Stem changing verbs are important. It's a big, big category of verbs. There are all kinds of verbs that are stem changers. Sadly, you just have to know which ones are. Okay. But stem changers do mean that in that main body of the verb, the part that is not the AR part, this is the stem, right? Um, yeah, here is the ending, right? The infinitive ending, this is the stem, okay? So in these stem changing verbs and you just have to know which ones they are, whatever syllable is right next door to the ending the, to the infinitive ending, whichever one is right next door to the AR or right next door to the ER or right next door to the IR, that is the syllable, that is the vowel that will split off and do something weird in that shoe or boot form. And that means for your practical purposes, it'll happen in the forms that are not nosotros. <laughs> Anything that's not nosotros. Yes. <laughs> nosotros is outside the boot, as they call the boot. Nosotros will not. Nosotros will always go back to this original vowel. Okay? Uh, nosotros will always go back to this original vowel. And Vosotros does too, but because we don't use vosotros in Latin America, I don't focus on that, but vosotros falls in the same category as nosotros. Mm -hmm. They're both what we say is outside the shoe or outside the boot. So that means they just go back to whatever this original vowel is and they keep it the way it is, okay? Uh, but the important thing is to know, to know is that there are three kinds of stem changes. We only did two last week. We're going to talk about another one uh, this week. Uh, the, the E splits off into an IE, a double vowel, right? Or, or the O splits off into UE. And you just have to know which verbs do this, okay? So the little drill we're gonna do here with the pictures, con las fotos, is kind of guessing, hmm, what verb do these represent? Not conjugating it yet, just what's the base verb? What's the general verb? Aquí, ah, uh, ooh, Tio Samuel, Uncle Sam, I want you. 
¿Cuál es el verbo? Querer. Yeah. 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 Right. We're, we're just, we're not conjugating it yet. We're just knowing what is this verb? What is this verb? What, what does this photo represent? <laughs> it represents the verb querer. And querer means both to want and to love. Oh, so if you want to say you love your pet, you love your kids, you love your friends, yeah. you love your mom and dad, you love people in your family, they use querer. Sometimes used for romantic love, usually amar is used for romantic love, but it could be used for that too. Okay. Esta foto, this photo, esta foto, que representa, que representa, what does that represent? Dormir. 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 And dormir is an O to U E. It's got to be an O to U E because, yeah, it's got an O in there. Dormir, O to U E. Okay. This one has to do with mental abilities. And sir. Pensar. 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 Pensar to think. One thing for you to, a good thing for you to know, I'm going to put my dashes in there, is that pensar means to think, but if you want to say think about, you will not use the word about at all. You use the word en. You think on something in Spanish. You think on it. I, hmm, I think I'll think on that. <laughs> pensar en. Pensar en to think about. So if you want to add that idea of about, we use N, not the word about. Okay. Uh, I, ooh, it's hard to find something that talks about can do, can do. Como se dice can? Poder. Puedo. Poder. Poder. And this has got it in French. Pouvoir. 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 <laughs> but poder, can. And we use it more. In American English, we use can more than we say able to, okay? Although they're equivalent, they mean the same. To be able to means the same thing as can, okay? Uh, okay, so poder. And again, it's an O to U E because it's got an O in there. Yeah, it's an O to U E, poder. Okay, que representa? What does Cerrar. this represent? Yeah. Cerrar. Cerrar. Oh. Cerrar to close. Cerrar to close. I'm going to show you something because this came up in our initial questions. If you want to say the store is closed, like they put on the sign, closed, open, closed, open. Then cerrado. they're talking about it. Oh, cerrado. cerrado. Remember I told you that ADO talks about a state that something, yeah. Well, this isn't a feeling, but it's a state that something is in. So that when I change it to that ADO form, it means that's the state the shop or building is in, closed, right? But the verb by itself is cerrar, cerrar to close. And it's an E to IE stem change. It's got an E, an E there in the stem. Okay, uh, ¿Qué okay, representan? We've got somebody who has Correr. is on the point of doing Empezar. something. Correr. Empezar. Ah, empezar. Empezar. And these are these are equivalents, and they're oddly both stem changers. Empezar and comenzar are equivalents. In mi opinión, in my opinion, I think you hear empezar a little more. Yeah. In common conversation, I tend to use empezar more than I use comenzar, but they are equivalent, just as begin and start are equivalents in English. It makes no difference if you tell somebody begin now or start now. Okay, uh, they mean the same thing. They're just two different verbs that mean the same activity. So empezar means the same activity as comenzar. And again, we look at the vowel right next door to the AR part of the infinitive to know which E letter changes to IE. We look at the vowel right next door to the AR part of the infinitive ending to know which vowel changes to IE. Empezar and comenzar are both E to IE stem changes. Vale, magnifico. Aquí. Ah, ooh. 
Prefiero. Making a choice. Ah, muy bien. Sí. Oh, okay. and I forgot to write it in. Ah, preferir, preferir. I added this one in later and I forgot to even put that in. Preferir. Oh, ay, a ver. No lo quiero. I don't want that. Uh, preferir. To prefer. Okay, to prefer. And which E gets the same change? It's the one that's right next door to the ending, which is an mm -hmm. IR verb in this case. Preferir, preferir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, muy bien. A ver. Bueno, dale. Uh, ooh, ¿Qué representa? What does this represent? Recuerdo. Oh, uh, yeah, I sí. see. Uh, oh, y perdón. Oh, wow, I forgot. I, I had all these set up. I thought I had moved them. I think I had a problem with my, my application here. Perder, perder, to lose. Perder, to lose. Uh, you may hear it. There is a different form of this verb with uh, a perder. Say, and that means to get lost, like to lose yourself, to get lost, not to lose a thing. The first one, perder by itself, is to lose a thing, to lose an item, okay, to misplace it, uh, lose track Do of it. Do you use it. a recuerdo? Recuerdo? Uh, no, but we will have that one soon. Mm. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, so this one, okay. and this is people there. coming together. Mm. Volver. 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 Yeah. Volver, to return, to come back. Let me move this up. Volver, to return, to come back. This is an O to U-E because it's got an O in the stem. It's the O that's next door to the E-R part of the ending. Volver, so. Vuelvo, vuelvo, uh, I'm coming back, okay? And uh, to come back to a place, okay? Uh, to return, not to return a thing, to return to a place is volver, okay? Let's look at that one more time. Volver is to return to a place, a human being actually coming back to a place. That's why I include come back. Volver is, does not talk about returning things, you know, like somebody loaned me their bike and I'm returning their bike. It's not that kind of return. Okay, aquí. Ah, esto, this one here. Recordar. 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 And there's another verb, which is also a stem changer which means the same thing, just like empezar and comenzar mean the same thing. These two verbs here, recordar and acordarse de, acordarse de is more complicated, so we won't use it today, but just know that those two things both mean the same thing to remember. Acordarse de is more complicated to use because it's got that little se ending. That means you need special pronouns with it. You need the little special thing there. So recordar, is the one that we are actually going to use. So we'll underline that, recordar. Okay, and it looks a lot like record. So it's easy for us to, uh, to recall that this word means to remember. Ooh, esto, this one here. Buscar. Okay. It is buscar, because she's looking for, but let's say she actually discovered Enco something. Encontrar. Encontrar, sí, encontrar. Right? Uh, encontrar, encontrar to find. And it's an O to U E stem change because the O that's right next door to the AR ending is what gets the change there. Okay. A ver. Ooh. Aquí. This one right here. Nevar. Nevar. Nevar is one of the nice ones because it only has one way to conjugate it because I don't snow and you don't snow and we don't snow. It's just, it snows, right? So nieva, 
Nieva is the only form you will hear conjugated here because it snows. A human being does not do this action. It, the environment, does this action. Nieva. Nieva is the only form you will hear with that particular verb. Okay. Oh, this is the eating of a particular meal. Almorzar. 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 Uh, in Spanish, unlike in English, in English, we just use eat and then the name of the meal. Okay. But in Spanish, they have literally a different verb for eating that particular meal. And the one here is almorzar to eat lunch. And it's an O to UE stem change. There is the O that is next door to the AR, almorzar to eat lunch. Okay, when uh, the noun el almuerzo means lunch, the meal itself. Okay, the word almuerzo can also be the yo form of I'm doing this now, almuerzo a las doce. I eat lunch at noon if I talk about my habits, my my general pattern of behavior. Okay, otra vez. This is like nevar. It's a precipitation thing. It's nevar. Llover. 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 Llover is an ER verb. And again, because it's a weather event, I don't do it and we don't llover. do it. So it only conjugates one way. And that is llueve. Llueve, right? Uh, it rains. Llueve. 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 It rains. Uh, o to U E here is, oops, here is the O that changes, llueve, O to U E. Bien? Vale, magnifico. Aquí. Ah! Jugar. 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 This is the oddball of the group because jugar is not an O to U E. It's the only one, the only one that's a U to U E, okay? And this jugar verb, jugar, is used to talk about playing games, whether they're cards, whether it's a board game, whether it's playing with a toy, playing sports, playing with toys, playing with games, playing sports, right? Uh, tocar is the verb that means to play an instrument. Playing an instrument is a different verb altogether, tocar, because you touch that you touch that instrument to play it yeah but jugar is playing with sports games toys okay good to marilyn si si dime um on the previous slide where we showed the guy getting ready to run track si si is, is that considered jugar as well um uh, I would say no, it would not be because you don't really play mm -hmm. at track. Mm -hmm. um, somebody would probably say practica atletismo. He practices track mm -hmm. or he, yeah. Because it's not a game the way football is a game. It's a competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they might say competir, compite, he competes or practica, he practices, but they probably wouldn't use jugar for that. Um, okay, bien. Ah, now we are returning something. De volver. De volver. De volver. De volver. We take volver, return to a place, and we put a prefix de in front of it. And now it does become to return an item to somebody, to give it back. You took it away and now you're bringing it back. Somebody loaned it to you, prestar, and now they're giving it back, devolver. And because devolver is built on that general verb form of volver, it also gets the stem change because it uses the same base word, right? Okay. It uses volver, but it tags on a prefix to it, a de, de volver, to return something. Uh, bueno. Oh, importante. I don't think we really talked about this, but this is an important verb, and I think they did talk about it in the video I sent you. This is when a body part hurts. Doler. Doler. Doler to hurt. To ache when a body part hurts. 
So when you want to say my stomach hurts, my head hurts, my mm -hmm. eyes hurt, my shoulder hurts. Mm -hmm. When you want to say a body part hurts you because it aches, they use duele, D-U-E-L-E, -E, duele. Okay. I'm going to show you something kind of special about doler, uh, duele. Um, when we use this word duele, we don't use it in a yo form and we don't use it in a nosotros form because this thing hurts. Uh, maybe these two things hurt. Maybe this part of your body hurts. Maybe if you're a little kid and you've got earaches, now those two parts of your body, they hurt, okay? You're only gonna see two forms of this verb. It'll either be duele, it hurts, or duelen, they hurt if it's ears, they hurt if it's eyes, okay? Uh, if both your shoulders hurt, duelen. If your knees hurt, duelen. But if my hand hurts, just the hand, it's duele. If my head hurts, it's duele. If it's estomago, it's one thing, it's duele. Bien? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, doler, you will not see in a yo form, but you'll see it to talk about a part of the body. Bien? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And doler is an important one to know. And I believe he brought it, I believe, yeah, in the video. See, 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 Larry. So what do you say if I hurt? Because some days I hurt. Tengo uh, dolor. Uh, well, there, okay. There are more, uh, there's more than one way to say hurt. Um, Generally, it's me duele with a part of the body. Uh, todo me duele. Everything hurts. Tengo dolor. I have pain. Tengo dolor. And dolor looks like doler. But dolor is pain, the thing. Tengo dolor. Tengo lo dolor. And then they usually use a de to say, I have pain of my head. I have pain. Uh, See, some days we do hurt all over, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Todo me duele. Everything hurts. Todo me duele. Todo me duele. Everything hurts. Todo me duele. Todo. Everything. Todo me duele. I'm going to put it in the chat box. Yeah. Todo me duele. Everything hurts. Mm -hmm. Everything hurts. Así es. So it is. Okay. Uh, es buena pregunta. Ah, uh, a ver. Okay. Uh, pretty soon we're going to go to our uh, page that I sent you. Uh, no, actually, we're going to go to it now. We're going to go to it now. So I'm going to do a share screen after I make this large enough so you don't have to squint. Uh, we're going to take a look at the translation. And then we're going to send you out into small groups to use some of these verbs in some questions back and forth, okay? Uh, a ver, aquí vamos. Here we go. So the first part we'll do together, make sure everybody's on the same page here, and then we'll send you off to small groups. Traduce del inglés al español. Translate from the English to the Spanish. It does not rain a lot in the desert. ¿Cómo se dice? How would we say this? We need to use llover, right? And we need to make it a negative llover. No llueve. No llueve. No, no llueve mucho, mucho en el desierto. No llueve mucho en el desierto. No llueve mucho en el desierto. Uh, okay. It snows a lot in the north. Nieva mucho en el norte. Nieva mucho en el norte. Nieva mucho en el norte. Exacto. I want more money. Quiero más dinero. Quiero más dinero. 
quiero más dinero, quiero más dinero. Uh, oh, I can work tomorrow. Puedo trabajar mañana. Puedo trabajar mañana. Puedo trabajar. And I want you to notice in puedo trabajar, puedo trabajar, puedo, because I'm using two verbs next to each other. Ooh, won't let me do the underline yet. Puedo is the only part that gets conjugated. We would never say puedo trabajo. Puedo trabajo. I can I work? No. <laughs> I can I work? No. We don't say in English, I can I work. I can work. I am able to work. So, puedo, we conjugate, but trabajar, the second verb that tags along stays unconjugated, right? Puedo trabajar. Y por fin aquí, the movie starts at nine. La película empieza nueve. La película uh, empieza a las nueve. A las nueve. Oh, okay. Or you can say la película. Uh, la película la comienza. comienza. And that means the same thing. It makes no difference, really. I do think empieza is a little mm -hmm. more common to talk about that. But people could use comienza, certainly. Comienza a las nueve. And it means the exact same thing. Yes. Exactamente. Bien. OK. Vale. Sí. Sí. Muy bien. OK. Let's take a look at our questions next. And uh, we're not going to do these all at once. I think we're going to take them in groups of four, cuatro. We're going to take them in groups of four, cuatro, OK? So I'm going to send you off into groups and see uh, if you can answer these questions. Uh, and the first four questions are, que encuentras? What do you find? Uh, que encuentras? Cuando pasas la aspiradora debajo del sofá. What do you find when you vacuum under the sofa? Because the there's always stuff under there. Que encuentras? What do you find? And you're going to, oh, I find this. I find that. Uh, encuentro, encuentro juguetes de gatos. I find cat toys, personally. Okay. Cuando empiezan a cenar ustedes? When do you guys start, start to eat dinner? Okay, so we're asking about a time, right? Uh, Cuando visitan tus parientes, when you visit your relatives. So here's the situation. When you visit your relatives, duermen en, en tu casa. Oh, en su casa, perdón, that should have been su casa. Eh, oh, no, perdón, it is tu casa, perdón. Cuando visitan tus padres, when your, your relatives visit, when your relatives visit. Cuando visitan tus padres, when your relatives visit. Duermen en tu casa o en un hotel? Do they sleep at your house or at a hotel? Okay. And uh, ¿cuántas horas duermes por lo general? How many hours do you sleep in general or generally? See, ¿sí? por lo general. Bien, so that's what those are asking. I'm going to send you off to breakout groups to work on these for about five to seven minutes. ¿Cuántos somos? Ah, 14. 14. Vamos a ver. Ah. Cinco. I think we're going to go into five. Oh, I must have done something wrong with my breakout room control. Okay. Ooh. Okay. A ver, here we go. And we're going to send you off for a few minutes to try that. Hit your join button.
Muy bien, ok, esperamos a uh, ocho, ocho más. We're waiting about, about eight more people. A ver. And I had to leave to briefly find my props for the first question. Aquí vienen. Okay, 10 segundos. We got 10 seconds, everybody coming back. Difícil o no? Hard or no? No? Okay. Vale, magnífico. Aquí vienen todos. Here comes everybody back. Muy bien. Bueno. A ver. 
Vamos a ver, vamos a ver qué, qué pasa aquí, qué pasó, what happened, qué pasó con las preguntas. ¿Qué encuentras? ¿Qué encuentras? What do you find? En mi casa, en mi casa, uh, encuentro migas, crumbs. <laughs> en mi casa. En mi casa encuentro juguetes de gatitos, juguetes. Y encuentro siempre, <risa> encuentro siempre. Ah, ah monedas, dinero, 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 dinero monedas, ¿verdad? Dinero. Sí. Ah, bueno. ¿Qué, ¿Qué encuentras? What do you find? ¿Qué encuentras? Algo más? Something else? Encuentro muchas cosas. Zapatos, <laughs> uh, comida. <laughs> encuentro, sí, encuentro. And the key is we need to answer this with an encuentro. Because if it's encuentras, what do you find? Encuentro. Right? We're answering with a yo form. Encuentro, encuentro zapatos. <laughs> Comida, migas, that means crumbs of things. Yeah, crumbs. Polvo, uh, polvo. Polvo, dust. Polvo, dust. ¿Qué más? ¿Qué más? Papel. Papeles. Papeles, sí. Uh, a veces plumas. Ok. Bien, bien, vale. ¿Cuándo empiezan ustedes a cenar? ¿Cuándo empiezan a cenar? When, when do you guys start? Now, if I'm asking you guys all, should I answer with a yo or should I answer with a nosotros? Nosotros. Should answer with a nosotros. So our verb here. Empezamos. 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 And. A las siete. A las siete. Seis. Seis. A las, a las siete. A las seis cinco. A las y seis. Media. A las seis y media. Un, una hora. We answer with an hour of some kind, right? Uh, empezamos. Empezamos a cenar a las, a las siete, siete, a las seis y media, o lo que sea, whatever it may be, right? Mm. We need a time. Uh, we need a time there tagged on. Uh, cuando visitan tus parientes, when your relatives visit, duermen en tu casa o en un hotel? Now, am I asking you about yourself or about somebody else? Somebody else. Somebody else. So that verb stays the same because you're talking about somebody else. Okay. Duermen. And here you've only got two choices, right? Uh, duermen en casa, Mi casa. Or duermen en un hotel. Right? Those are the only two choices we've got there. Bien? Uh, okay. ¿Cuántas horas duermes por lo general? Generally, how many hours do you sleep? Seven, eight hours. Siete horas. Duermo. OK, duermo. We need a duermo here. Duermo ocho, ocho horas. horas. It might be siete, siete horas. horas. We hope you're not one of those people that does cuatro, cuatro. horas. <laughs> <laughs> Pero que <Some>. no. <laughs> Espero que no, pero a veces sí, sometimes yes, sí. Ocho horas, siete horas, seis horas, lo que sea. How many? We need a, a period of time. Muchas horas, if you just want to be general. O pocas horas, very few. Sí, 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 dime, Cindy. Oh, and Cindy, you're on mute. You have to take yourself off and mute. Sorry. Okay. Hold on. Um, I used a cerca de, about. Yeah. Is that correct in that? Ah. So Okay. Um, qué buena pregunta. Okay. About and a number of hours, right? Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. generally how you'll hear people say that. This. Uh, duermo. Uh, 
uh, unas ocho horas. You'll generally hear an unas. Unas ocho. Un, unas ocho. So you don't do acerca de? Uh, no, acerca de is about when you're naming a subject, like, um, por ejemplo, about is a hard word to translate. Um, por ejemplo, uh, hablamos, hablamos acerca del clima. We're talking about the weather. Hablamos acerca de la política. We're talking about politics, that kind of about. But if I say about as in, in general, and now I'm naming a number, I won't use acerca de. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Does, unas, does unas get translated as like some? Yeah, some, some eight hours. Yeah, okay. some okay. eight hours. Okay. Yeah, it, it does mean exactly that. See, okay. eso es, it is. Okay. Bueno. No. Otra pregunta. Another question about that or no? No. No. no okay. Thank you. Okay. Or you might say somebody could also say something like, uh, duermo ocho horas más o menos. Uh, they might express it that way too, because yeah. you're giving a, a ballpark, right? So there are different ways to express that, but it won't be acerca de. Um, okay. Uh, cuatro más. ¿Qué recuerdas de tu primera casa? ¿Qué recuerdas? What do you remember? ¿Qué recuerdas de tu primera casa? Uh, yo recuerdo el ático de mi primera casa porque era... El ático era muy misterioso. Tenía tesoros. It had little treasures. ¿sí? El ático. Cuando, cuando era niña. When I was a little kid. Uh, ¿Dónde puedes comprar la mejor comida? Where can you buy the best food? ¿Sí? ¿Qué puedes hacer muy bien? What can you do really well? De nada. Ah. Wait a <laughs> la plata. <laughs> Ahora quizás nada. Maybe not so much now. Normalmente, normally. Normalmente. ¿Qué puedes Wait hacer muy bien? Wait la flauta. <laughs> ah, sí. Eso es. ¿Ok? Y en tu familia, ¿quién pierde muchas cosas? In your family. There's always one in every family. ¿Quién pierde muchas cosas? Who loses lots of stuff? <laughs> no. Who loses yes. lots of stuff? Okay. Yes. So in ocho, we're talking about one person. <laughs> it could be yo, but it might be somebody else, right? Uh, siete, seven, we're talking about tú, you. So you're answering with a yo. Uh, seis, uh, seis, you, tú. We're talking about you. So yo. And cinco, uh, tú. You, so we're answering with a yo, bien? Okay, so we're gonna be using those. Most of them are talking about ourselves. We'll send you back out into breakup rooms. About cinco minutos, cinco minutos. Un, unos cinco minutos, some five minutes.
muy bien. Casi listos. Estamos casi listos. We're all met, almost ready. Any questions so far? Si o no. And I think it take, puts you on to mute when you come back in out of breakout room. I should remind everybody about that. Hasta 10 segundos. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Uno, y aquí vienen todos. Here comes everybody back on in. A ver. Muy bien, muy bien, muy bien. And please remember when you come out of breakout room in here, you need to take yourselves off of mute because it automatically mutes you when you come back in. I don't know why it does that, but it does. Uh, so if you need to pipe up and ask a question, make sure you take yourselves off of mute. Okay. Um, Bueno, ¿qué recuerdas de tu primera casa? ¿Qué recuerdas? ¿Qué recuerdas? Yo recuerdo el jardín. O otra vez, ¿recuerdo qué? ¿Qué se di? Recuer yo recuerdo el jardín. El jardín. Recuerdo el jardín. The garden. Muy mm -hmm. bien. Or yard. We sometimes use yard, but you know, jardín is what they use. There's not a separate yard word. Jardín is yard or garden. ¿Qué más? Recuerdo mucho. No mucho. Recuerdo mucho porque estoy en mi casa ahora. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bueno, algo más. Anything else? But we remember, we, we need to answer this with a, a recuerdo, right? Uh, recuerdo, and I need to put my share screen back on here. Recuerdo is the verb we need. So that's what we're looking for, recuerdo. And then something, el jardín. Uh, el jardín, mi cuarto, mi habitación, my room, you know, lo que sea, whatever it may be. Okay. ¿Dónde puedes comprar la mejor comida? ¿Dónde? Puedo, puedo, puedo. Puedo. Puedo comprar. ¿Puedo comprar comida dónde? Ah, oh. es. Yeah. Ah, uh, la, mejor, la mejor comida en AJ's. Uh, and AJ's and Sprouts, lo que sea, wherever it may be, bien? Okay, ¿qué puedes hacer muy bien? Puede, puedo, puedo. Puedo, puedo, puedo hacer puedo. muy bien en el jardín. Oh, okay. Um, uh, I can, I can garden well, mm -hmm. ¿sí? Uh, mm -hmm. Puedo... Um, mm, ooh, garden is not in a specific verb. Uh, puedo plantar uh, cosas. Bien, puedo plantar en mi jardín. Puedo plantar en mi jardín. Sí, uh, puedo cuidar las plantas muy bien. Uh, bien, ok. Uh, puedo cocinar. Cocinar. Puedo cocinar muy bien. Uh, puedo tocar un instrumento. <laughs> <laughs> Tenemos flautista. We do have flautists here, so that, you know, sí. ¿Qué más? ¿Algo más? Puedo estar canchillo. Canchillo. Oh, uh, pu ¿Puedes qué, qué Diana? Puedo hacer canchillo. 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 Pro crochet. Okay. Oh, 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 okay. Down. Sí, 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 sí. Okay, sí, eso, sí. Entiendo, sí. Bueno, uh, puedo coser, puedo uh, reparar motores. I can fix motors, you know, lo que sea, whatever it may be. En tu familia, ¿quién pierde muchas cosas? En mi familia, oh. mi hija pierde todo. Mi hija pierde todo. Pierde ¿Sí? su dinero, Pierde, pierde, pierde qué? Pierde sus llaves, pierde todo. Mi hijo menor. 
Pierde. Nadie, nobody? Wow. No. Oh, okay. Mi hija. Los, mi, es, mi esposo no pierde nada. Mi hijo no pierde nada. Wow. Yo, yo de vez en cuando, once in a while, de vez en cuando, de vez en cuando, pierdo cosas como mis llaves o no sé, algo, algo en el gabinete. Ok, but here pierde just says pierde because you're talking about one person doing it. Bien, bueno, ok, cuatro más, four more. Or make sure we send out people for four more. En tu familia, ¿quién juega muy bien a un deporte? Who, spell, or who plays a sport really well? ¿Qué quieres hacer este verano? What do you want to do this summer? Uh, ¿A qué hora cierran los restaurantes en tu barrio? Mm -hmm. ¿Y qué piensas del clima? ¿Qué piensas del clima? What do you think about weather? Del clima aquí durante el verano. ¿Bien? ¿Vale? Bueno, a ver, y a practicar cinco minutos. Oh, mi gatito. Viene, viene gatito aquí. Sí, the street. Viene. Ven, ven. Ven, ¿dónde estás? ¿Dónde estás? Venga, eres tú. Becas. Oh, here. Oop, and we do we have some things that did not go through? Aquí. Becas. Ay, a ver. Okay.
Ok, muy bien. A ver. Ok, muy bien. Ah, a ver, uh, uh. We're waiting for just a few more. Okay, and then uh, we're going to compare a few notes, and then I will give you your assignment for what to work on for the coming week, which is going to be uh, a little harder to follow in this book, but uh, we'll give you some videos at work. Okay, muy bien. Uh, vamos a ver, vamos a compartir aquí. We're going to share. Vamos a compartir las ideas aquí. En tu familia, ¿quién juega muy bien a un deporte? Who plays a sport really well? El hermano de mi esposo juega muy bien al basquetbol. Mm -hmm. Y no, no persona en mi familia juega... Un deporte muy bien. Ah, nadie. Okay. Ah, if you want to say nobody plays, like nobody plays, nobody. that's going to use juega because nobody is this many juega. people, <laughs> theoretically, right? And it would be sí. nadie. 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 Nadie juega. Ah, muy bien. A un deporte. O nadie juega a un deporte. Nadie juega a un deporte. Bien. Ok. Uh, algo, algo diferente. Something different. Mi hermosa juega golf. Muy bien. Ah, bien. Ok. Golf. El golf es muy popular. Hay, hay muchas personas que juegan al golf aquí. Hay muchas personas que juegan al uh, béisbol aquí, ¿verdad? Hay muchas personas que juegan al tenis aquí en Arizona. Bien. Ok. Uh, vale. ¿Qué quieres hacer este verano? What do you want to do this summer? ¿Qué quieres hacer este verano? Quiero salir a la cena con mis amigos. Bien, ok. Quiero cenar con mis amigos. Quiero sí. ver a mis amigos. Quiero ver. Sí. Quiero visitar sí, a mis quiero amigos. Visitar. Quiero visitar a mis amigos. A mis, a mis suegros. Sí, ok. ¿Algo más? Anything different? Quiero. 
not sure if this is the correct way to say it, but quiero viajar ir a California. Ah, quiero viajar. Quiero viaja, viajar a California. Quiero viajar a California. Uh, quiero ver a mis amigos. Uh, quiero cenar con mis amigos. Ok, bien, ¿algo más? It's good. Ok, bien. Bueno, ¿a qué hora? So we need a time. ¿A qué hora cierran los restaurantes en tu barrio? En mi barrio todo se cierra muy temprano, muy temprano. Mm -hmm. Aquí en mi barrio los restaurantes cierran a las 7, a las 8. Muy temprano, porque es mm -hmm. Hills. Y todo se cierra muy, muy temprano en Fountain Hills. Ok. ¿A qué hora cierran los restaurantes en, en tu barrio, en su barrio? Diez o las diez. ¿A las diez? En mi barrio, los restaurantes cierran después mi acosta. Acuesta, acuesta, ah, acuesta, acuesta, acuesta. Después de que me acueste, después de que me acueste, uh, after I go to bed. Sí. sí, a veces, con frecuencia en Chicago, sí. Todo se cierra muy tarde. Everything sí. closes really late. Mm -hmm. En Chicago, todo, todo se cierra muy tarde. Everything muy closes tarde. really late, sí. Aquí, sí. más temprano. Ok. Mm. Ah, bueno, ah, ¿qué piensas del clima? What do you think about the weather? Aquí durante... Extrama... Extremadamente caliente. Mm, sí. Pienso que... Pienso. Es, el clima es extremadamente caliente. I think the weather is extremely hot. Mm -hmm. Pienso que, pienso que, pienso que, I think that, pienso que el clima, clima. sí, uh, pienso que hace mucho calor. For talking about weather, we can say, uh, está muy caliente, uh, perdón, uh, we can say, está muy calurosa, or caluroso, it's really, really hot. Hace mucho calor. Here is really kind of the standard thing. Pienso que hace mucho calor. Pienso que hace muchísimo calor. If you really want to make it emphatic, we make it muchísimo calor. Hace muchísimo calor. Uh, it makes a lot of heat. This is a phrase that's used often for talking about cold or hot, cold or hot. It makes very hot. It makes very cold because the weather makes temperature conditions. Hace muchísimo calor. Hace muchísimo frío. Hace fresco. It's cool. Y así es. Bien? Okay. So when you said yeah, extra, extremadamente caliente, so pienso que el clima extra... I, sí, like porque, that? Okay. Pues sí, porque es tu opinión, because that's your opinion. Pienso okay. que, I think that. Pienso que, I think that. Uh, in Spanish, we have to include the word that. When we say, I think that something is a certain way. In English, sometimes we omit the word that. I think it's hot. I think she's pretty. I think it's warm. But in Spanish, we cannot exclude the word that. Pienso que. I think that. And now I describe a condition. Pienso que. Pienso que. Okay? Vale? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I am going to send you off this week to read. Uh, I'm going to have you read another chapter, otro capítulo. But besides doing that, we're going to look at this thing that is the E to I, E stem changers. Uh, 
there are, uh, we had verbs like preferir, okay, uh, i.e. stem changers, dormir, u.e. stem changers. There's one more category and we left it to last because it's a small category. It's very small, but it's verbs that change from e just to i, not from e to i.e. like preferir or entender, but verbs that change from e to i, okay? Uh, what you are going to see is uh, I'm going to give you a link to a video and it will look like this so that you know you're in the right place. And notice it says present tense. These E to I stem changers all tend to be in the I R infinitives. And I will tell you right now, they tend to be very weird verbs in many different tenses. But it's a small category of verbs. It's not like gobs and gobs. There are gobs and gobs of UE stem changers, gobs and gobs of IE stem changers. This tends to be a smaller category, but we are going to talk about them. And it is not an IE change, it's just E to I just I. And we're going to show you what kinds of verbs do that. Okay, so you'll see this is from uh, Senor Jordan, Jeremy Jordan. He's going to talk about that. Um, and we're also going to talk about some other verbs that are, are kind of in some of these stem changer categories, but not. They kind of are stem changers, but the yo form does something else weird. So I'm going to give you a list of the verbs we're going to specifically look at because they talk about them in different places in this book. And I kind of don't like the way they've break, broken them down into categories. But um, I'll probably send you more than one video because it'll be more than just each IE stem changes. It'll be a couple of special special verbs. And some of them are going to also, besides having that stem change, they're going to do something weird for you, a few of them. But they're verbs that are kind of common to use. So uh, they're very conversational types of verbs. So we're going to focus on really just expanding the kinds of verbs we, we can use. Bien? Good with that so bien. far? Sí? Yep. Yeah. Muy bien. Fantástico. Ok, vale. Entonces nos vemos la semana que viene. El será, será. It will be, va a ser el 17 de mayo. Wow, we'll be right into mid-May by then. ¿Está bien? Sí. Que, que tengan, Gracias. que tengan uh, una buena semana. May you all have a very good week. Que tengan buena semana, ¿verdad? Gracias. Que lo pasen Gracias. bien. Have a good time. Que lo pasen bien. Que lo pasen bien. Gracias. 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 Okay. Yes. Hasta luego.